Hi everybody, it's Rachel here. I wanted to show you a sneak peek of the Los Poblanos episode that we just, just started editing and um, introduce you to Matt Rimby, um, who's the executive director of Los Poblanos. And he's going to give us about a 13 minute uh, tour of the facility and explain to us why it matters that this amazing John Gaw meme structure is preserved, but not just preserved, but looked at in a totally new way of looking at sustainability. And um, this will be part of an episode that ties John Gaw meme and Mary Coulter, two amazing American architects from the early 20th century together, and talks about their unique approach to designing for the long haul, which is something that we have a lot to learn from. I hope you enjoy this segment. Thanks for watching. I am Matt Remby, the executive director of Los Poblones. So I was born and raised on the property. It's a, it's a family property. And uh, it, we ended up uh, working uh, on a preservation plan to preserve the original 25-acre headquarters of, of the original Los Poblones ranch that at one point was thousands of acres and stretched all the way to the Sandia Mountains. Uh, today, the 25 acres has the original John Gamin buildings on it and that's Los Poblanos and La Quinta Cultural Center, and the original dairy buildings that were part of Creamland Dairies. I mean, it is a wonderful case study in historic preservation because we kept on using the history to drive the plan. Um, and it just kind of started falling in place naturally. So a lot of buildings like this in the United States have become house museums and are having a lot of challenges uh, in raising money and funding these types of properties, we took a different approach. We thought that we would have more luck um, really utilizing the way they were intended to be used. Uh, what we tried to do was give 70-80% of the land to an agricultural trust in perpetuity uh, to preserve all that land and, buy, and we need to create a viable, a viable business. The four main businesses of, of the property are, uh, it works as lodging, we have a retail shop on site, wholesale lavender and we have um, readapted La Quinta to its original intended use which was kind of as a quasi art center civic center but uh, really a, a public place to do events so we hold events uh, from weddings to corporate retreats and talks and uh, all our chefs uh, are harvesting produce on site The original house on site from the 1850s was from the Armijo family, and in 1930-31, Hannah McCormick Sims and Albert Sims, they hired John Gamim to renovate the original residence, and so he added another 75% onto that building and um, created a traditional hacienda-style courtyard. Uh, and these were kind of his signature buildings that he did, and the kind of cemented. Um, this vocabulary. And so uh, John Gamim felt that Albuquerque needed its own architectural vocabulary, that creating the territorial revival with the brick coping and the Greek pediment and windows and doors was a tool for him to um, preserve our architectural identity down here. And the building really feels very 19th century. He's kind of mimicking the 19th century building that's already there, but adding a lot of his own uh, influences which is both Spanish colonial, there's a little bit of deco. It's really meant to feel very wonky, the original building. It's meant to feel like it was added on over generations. And then La Quinta, the building next door, is meant to feel like a modern building. It was built in 1934 and now it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of symmetry. Uh, he's bringing in deco, some nouveau, but still territorial revival. And that building had an art gallery that was open six days a week. They did impressionist shows. Thornton Wilder would do poetry readings. Um, there was a library where we could check out books, the card catalog system. Uh, the first pool in Albuquerque with men's and women's shower rooms and locker rooms. And me being an engineer, engineered all these buildings and the way the water flowed and cross draft. And so the buildings are really magnificent. Um, 
So he ends up also uh, contracting some of the great artists and in New Mexico at the time. Uh, Gustav Bauman did carvings uh, of the doors and fireplace mantle in the ballroom. A guy named uh, Miller did a series of mural panels over all the main windows that feel kind of like Thomas Hart Benton. Peter Hurd, who's one of our great uh, New Mexican painters who was trained by the Wyeth family, did a big fresco mural of San Ysidro, the patron saint of farmers. And uh, great craftsmanship by a guy named Walter Gilbert of Ironwork, also of San Ysidro on the door handles, uh, as well as um, uh, tin work throughout the building by, uh, by Robert Woodman, but designed by me. Uh, Meme uses San Ysidro as the symbol of the building, so as elegant as it is, he wants to remind you that the driver is really agriculture and farming. The, the wholesale lavender kind of came about organically. Um, we really wanted to create unique amenities, and as part of the agricultural history, how do you farm progressively? How do you be... They were a dynamic progressive farm in the 30s. Um, and they were using turkeys for pest management. They had the first corn harvester in the state. They were raising sugar beet seeds uh, because there was a shortage of, of sugar in the United States. So uh, they actually had POWs, uh, German POWs, that were on work programs here. Um, it was, they were raising churro sheep and reintroducing back to the Navajo Nation. And so we asked ourselves, how do we have that same level of progressiveness. That not be just stewards of the building, but stewards of the land. We started farming organically and really thinking about low water use plants and came up with the idea of growing lavender, which actually the Spanish brought here um, three, four hundred years ago and used it for medicinal purposes. So that we thought was a great plant. So that's really become the thrust of our, our, our farming. Um, and so we distill all the plants on site. Those we make value added products, which we sell in our own little shop here, but we also distribute them wholesale as far away as Japan. And, and then farming uh, vegetables organically. So that, you know, we have a full field to fork movement here. Uh, we've kind of coined our own term for our cuisine called Real Grand Valley Cuisine, which is really kind of featuring vegetables that grow on site and really well in this Rio Grande River Valley. Uh, a lot of native uh, vegetables and things like temporary beans and chilies. That's become really important and has kind of brand Los Poblanos. So people used to come here for the architecture and now they come here for the food and the architecture. What's great about it is that all his architecture is really you know, designed to fit well on this farm and to push agriculture so it's very, it's got this wonderful synergy that, that, that has made it, um, made the business model kind of gel. Trying to manage the sustainability green question with preservation, they always don't go hand in hand and we're working hard to make sure that we do that. Just to be able to open up your windows and get fresh air and we've designed all the rooms to have cross drafts and really took all that from John Gami and these buildings with their porch halls and the way he juxtapositions them, taking the sun into account that they work extremely well. We did two styles of vocabulary. We, we, when we added new guest rooms, we added on more territory of revival style rooms. We also added on um, these agricultural style buildings, uh, which are basically 1930s ag buildings, and we have our own little New Mexican twist on them. But they have a lot of the same elements that the original buildings do. Deep portals, zaguans, or in farm uh, vernacular, I guess they would be hog trot. Um, and say they work exactly the same way. So all those to decrease people's use of their air conditioners, the biggest challenge is uh, probably the grounds because I think we've decreased water use by something like 70%, but just by not doing flood irrigation in the fields, which is the way that they were designed and intended to be used. Um, so we're trying to be uh, do a lot more drip irrigation, plant more xeric plants that can yield things that we can use on site, either culinarily or in value-added products. Um, but the historic gardens are fairly lush, um, and they have these wonderful kind of irrigation systems that were designed um, by Rose Greeley, a pioneer landscape architect. Her work is beautiful, so to not utilize all those systems doesn't allow us to tell the story. So to us, John Gamim is the most beautiful metaphor 
for what New Mexico is all about. And, and these are some of his most interesting buildings. And then there's an entire chapter in Chris Wilson's book about creating the territorial revival, and it's on Los Poblanos, because there, there's a beautiful residential example, and then there's a beautiful public building example. And Meme did incredible public buildings all across New Mexico, and he also did incredible residences. No one gets to experience the homes. They're, they're owned by private individuals. Uh, the unique opportunity to stay at the inn and actually see what makes those those buildings so beautifully designed and so livable and then come over to La Quinta and see a commercial building and understand scale and um, you know his level of details and how he tips his hat towards Spanish colonial, Native American, Mexican, Anglo and brings all these things together. Um, it's a great place to peel back the layers of New Mexico. You know, he did preservation projects um, and restored the Acoma Church. You know, he put back all the portals uh, in Santa Fe on the plaza because we tore them down when we were trying to become a state and we didn't want to look too uh, Mexican. Uh, so he puts them all back. When he sees the amount of Anglo architecture coming in the state, he says, listen, we have to we have to celebrate our own regional architecture. We do have the oldest architecture in the United States. And so he creates the master plan there, creates the master plan for UNM campus. And to me, it kind of connects all these, this, these amazing histories. People really uh, appreciate what we've done. Um, they've helped us, so they've been all over, and they're, some of them are architects and teachers and farmers and gardeners and professors and business people and everybody has the same kind of reaction and I think, um, I can't remember if I think it was Fitzgerald, I think it was something along the lines of you know, beauty and this level of abundance is sublime and you know the combination of our location and what John Gamin did and what's just kind of naturally happened here, people really do value and appreciate it so uh, I think they're, they're tired of traveling halfway around the world and staying in another high-end hotel that looks like the one that they stayed in wherever they just came from. So they're looking for authenticity. Whether they're Republican or Democrats or whatever religion, they all share one same passion and interest that we do, which is sort of this journey to find a unique experience. And so that's, that's been very gratifying. A quick tour here. It's a great way to have it all come together. Having an accomplished engineer, architect, and historic preservationist all rolled into one. And not only that, the guy was a beautiful designer. So we're now seeing that he is being considered one of the great American architects, which he, he deserves that moniker. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we all should be really proud of it and celebrate that as a state.